still wrong. Imelda, tell us where you were born and how you came to the U.S. Um, my name is Imelda Plasencia. I was born in Guadalajara, Mexico, and I came when I was five years old. I crossed the U.S.-Mexico border in a car. Um, prior to that, I was separated from my parents for two years because they first, first they came um, by themselves so that they could generate enough money to send for us. And so all I knew when I was going to cross the border was that I was going to see my parents again. So I was very excited. A person told you something, and if you can just repeat it for me, when you wake up, you'll, you'll see your mother. Can you just repeat that story for me about what, what exactly she told you? Yeah, so um, I, be, I, got in, I got into the car, and they told me that when I woke up, I was going to see my mother again. So that's all I knew. When did you realize that it would be so difficult to obtain a college education as an undocumented student? Growing up, I always did well in school. Um, I, I excelled, I was involved in sports. And when it came time to apply to college, um, at that time we still had the paper applications and there was a section that said social security number. So I went in to see my college professor, my college counselor, and I asked her what I would write. She said to leave it blank. I was fortunate enough that she knew about AB 540 and was able to guide me in the right direction. I always knew that I was born in another country, but I never knew what it meant until I reached the, the age of 17 and was ready to, to go to college and apply. So the implications of it all sank in. You decided to attend community college first. Why is that? Mm -hmm. I decided to attend community college because it just made sense. I knew that I came from a low-income household, from a single mother. Um, I knew that I was ineligible for financial aid. And so it just made sense to attend community college first. I was actually a part of a program called the Bridge Program that they help students transition into high to, from high school to college. And, the, and they told me that I was going to get free books. So I was just sold, and I entered the program, and they've helped me for the entire time at, that I was in my community college. What year did you graduate from high school, and what year did you enroll in community mm -hmm. college? I graduated in June 2003 from Workman High School, and I enrolled into Mount San Antonio College that summer. So I've been in school since summer 2003. And in 2006, you came to UCLA. Why was UCLA your first choice? Mm -hmm. I wanted to transfer into UCLA because I found out about IDEAS. IDEAS is an organization on campus that supports undocumented students. I knew that wherever I transferred, there had to be a group, an organization, students that would be able to support me and my, my situation. So I was really excited. I also found out that um, the Chicano Chicano Studies Department was, um, I just heard so many great things about it at UCLA. And I wanted um, UCLA to, to be the school that I attended. Can you share some of the struggles you've encountered to study at UCLA? Mm -hmm. When I transferred into UCLA, it was really difficult because I always had to take quarters off in order to work and generate enough money to come back the following quarter. Um, I always took morning classes because in the afternoon I had to be at work. So commuting, um, I always had to leave the house at about 5 a.m. to be traffic, to be in class by 8, and then finish class at about 2, drive back home so that I can, so that I can go to work. So it was very difficult feeling connected to UCLA in the beginning because I was a commuter and because I just had to, only had time to come to school, go to class, and then go home. Um, this past year, I've actually been fortunate enough to stay with, with some friends that are helping me pay for rent so that I'm able to feel more connected to the campus. And, and I have this past year, I, I'm, I feel very fortunate that I was able to, to live on campus for this last semester. Can you tell us some of the work you performed 
to raise money to mm -hmm. continue your education? I've always preferred to work. Um, so if I if I can work, um, I've always self fundraised. We've had um, we've had car washes. We've had. Um, I, I sometimes make things. Um, I like crafting, so I would sell those. Had food sales. Um, we have an annual bike ride called Tour to Dreams where we advocate for the California Dream Act, and I've always found sponsors, um, and I would use that money to pay for my tuition. Tell us about your mother and the work she's done and how she's contributed to your education. Mm -hmm. My mother, she's a single mother, and um, we live in a one-bedroom apartment, and I actually... This past year, I didn't have enough money to, to return to UCLA. I was away from UCLA for, for two years. And she saw how sad I was that I wasn't finishing my degree. So she never told anyone, but she was saving money because she works as a housekeeper and a waitress. And she knows that she's undocumented, so she knows that she's not going to be receiving any Social Security and that's labor intensive work. So she started saving up money and she never told anyone. One day she sat me down and told me that she had money saved up and that she wanted me to use it so that I could return to UCLA. Um, and this past year that I've been living at UCLA, she always makes food for me and all my roommates so that we don't have to worry about paying for food. I go home and she helps me with my clothes so I don't have to pay for washing my clothes. Um, when I don't have enough money, she still finds a way to, to find money to give me gas money um, so that I can come back to school <laughs> and go to class. So she's um, played a, a very big role in me being here today. You were, well, you had to leave the country for a year. Tell mm -hmm. us about that and, and why that occurred. When I was 17, I wanted to pursue some sort of pathway towards residency, see if there was anything that I can do. Um, we found someone that posed herself to be uh, an immigration attorney. She was actually a notary. So we received wrongful legal advice. She suggested that I leave the country in order to, for a judge, a judge to see my case. I didn't know at the time, but I was protected by my father's immigration case to, to, have my, to have my case looked at here in Los Angeles. I had to leave the country. I was separated for, for my family for a year. It was very difficult because I didn't know if I was going to see my family in a week or in a year. So I went through a deep depression at the time. I was very fortunate that over here in the United States, all my family members and friends were organizing to find me a different lawyer, and I was able to get paroled back into the country. But unfortunately, um, I'm still undocumented even through all that process. What, what year was that? That was 2008, all of 2008. So you had been at UCLA for a year when you had to leave? Yeah, I was enrolled in courses. And all of a sudden, I just got the letter, and I had I had to go. You're graduating this week, and what does that mean to you? I'm graduating this Friday for the Ideas graduation that we hold every year. Um, I'm inviting a lot of family, a lot of friends. I think I get excited when I see how happy they are and what it means to them. For me, it's difficult just because it's so uncertain of what's going to happen. Um, but when I see their face, <laughs> I look at it as something that that we've all accomplished, that that it took a community to um, for this to become a reality. So I look at my family and 
I thank them. And I want to use my education to be able to be in a position where I can be able to support my family financially so that my mother wouldn't have to work in such labor-intensive jobs and so that I will just be able to sustain my life as well. What are your plans after graduation? After graduation, the only thing that I have planned right now is a summer course that um, prepares students to apply for graduate school. So my goal is to continue with my education. Um, I'll be looking for jobs. I'll be looking for work, anything that I can find um, to be able to contribute to the house, to be able to generate money so that I, so that I can return to school. And you also want to attend graduate school. Can you talk about that as well? Mm -hmm. um, well? I really enjoyed my community college experience so much that it's that's a sector that I would that I would like to work in. I I would like to work as a college counselor within um, within programs that support underrepresented students, bridge programs, learning communities, puente programs and a counselor within those programs. I, I loved my experience being able to be an AAP student here at UCLA and being able to be a bridge student at, at Mount San Antonio College. Just trying to think what else. <coughs> you started the ideas group at Mount SAC. Can you talk about that and why you started that group at your community mm -hmm. college? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I wanted to come to UCLA was because of ideas at Mount Sac and just having so many friends, um, being a part of a community, being part of a college that mostly um, educates the majority of undoc undocumented population. I wanted, I wanted to leave Mount Sac with something. So I started working with other students even after I transferred to UCLA in order for so that it's a collective project to, to be able to start an organization at, at Mount SAC similar to ideas that supports undocumented students. So they've, I, I continue to work with them, to organize with them, it's my baby. <laughs> and I love all the students that are a part of it. We're, um, we're a big family. And I'm just happy that I was in a position where I learned the tools to organize and I was able to to be able to implement that program with other students. Great. <laughs>